Hi, this is Kristen with First Updates Now, and I'm here with Team 5190 Green Hope Falcons. Uh, I guess, do you all want to take a little bit and introduce yourselves? Um, what, how many years have you been on the team? Uh, my name's Ash. I'm VP of Marketing, and I've been on the team for three years. Um, my name's Ankit. Um, I'm the VP of Engineering on Team 5190. My name is Pratik. I am the Programming Lead. So do you guys want to kind of walk me through how the robot works? Um, how did y'all come up with some of the design or, or what were some of the design goals that y'all had coming up with the robot? All right, so the main design goal we had was the elevator pass-through, which you can see here. Um, we are on a powered arm that goes between the robot. So we had to cat everything and design the entire robot around the pass-through. Um, as you can see here, the arm goes between and intakes balls and hatches on both sides. So we also have a a two-stage cascading elevator, which has presets and goes to both all three levels of the rocket. Um, and can you go down? Yeah. And we also have a climber, which I don't think we can demonstrate here. Can we? We can demonstrate a yeah. little bit. Yeah, <laughs> we can, yeah, we can go up. We have a simple climber that basically pushes ourselves up, um, all the way up. This is all done autonomously. Um, and continuing to that, takes the... We'll talk about auto now. So we have a lot of autonomous functions on our robot this year. So I'll start with the sandstorm period. In the sandstorm period, we are fully autonomous, and we can place two hatches on the front of the cargo ship, or we can place two hatches on the bottom of the rocket ship. So the auto is really made possible by this pass-through system, so we can place a hatch in the front flip over and then pick up a hatch on the back and then just flip back over so it eliminates the need to turn 180. Another thing that we automated this year is our climb. So all we have to do is line up and then you hold down one button and it automatically goes up. So we have a gyroscope on the robot which keeps the robot level as it goes up. We have a bunch of sensors like we have a LiDAR in the back pointing down at a photoelectric sensor, which tells us if we're on the HAB or not. So based on that, we can fully automate our system. And because of this automation, our climb takes about seven to eight seconds. If we had to do it all manually, like I just demonstrated earlier, it would take a lot longer because we have to stabilize the robot manually and things like that. Another autonomous feature that we have is the presets. So we have a preset for intaking that way. I can just hit one button, it flips over, and then goes all the way up. And we use a vision system with two cameras to align in the back and the front. So that makes it really easy for us to place game pieces. All right. And then I guess, Dash, do you want to give me a little bit of insight into some of the outreach activities that y'all do or, or other stuff outside of just building the robot? Yeah, absolutely. So our team obviously has worked extremely hard on the engineering and programming aspects of our robot, and that couldn't come without some of our outreach um, aspects. So one of the things our team does that's kind of unique to our team is we do a mini competition to start off um, each year. We look at the FTC trailers and their reveal um, video for the games, and we base a mini game that we make ourselves, split ourselves into different teams and compete against each other. So last year during Power Up, we decided that picking up cubes was the right way to start off our season, which gave us a huge advantage, and we kept on doing that. Besides that, we decided to do a lot on reaching people that we didn't think could be reached. So there are tons of people who are in like rural counties of North Carolina in different countries who just don't have the access to technology that we do. So we managed to um, present at the North Carolina Peer-to-Peer -peer Workshops. We had two presentations, both by them. And um, we broadcasted those on YouTube to make sure that everyone could see them and it would be a resource for everyone in the world instead of just the few hundred people that were actually there. We also went abroad to Italy, Nepal, and um, India to demonstrate to people in villages and rural areas who had never seen technology before what robotics was all about. And we decided to help um, girls in engineering because, like, obviously we are at a more minority here. And so we created an event called Doyen Inspiration last year, um, which was an all-girls competition and seminar. And we used, uh, um, we collaborated with First NC to do that. And it was, like, this great success, and we're going to try to do it again this year. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, um, y'all are doing great so far um, on Saturday. So best of luck to y'all, and uh, we'll see you guys on the field.